At the end of this video, you should be able to identify the kinds of fish being cultured or raised as means of livelihood. Discuss the possible hazards by fish culturing or raising to the people in the community. Identify the ways to prevent possible hazards brought about by culturing or raising fish. Name the benefits that can derive from fish culturing. Fish farming is the business or industry of producing fish through husbandry and is synonymous to fish culture. In broader terms, fish farming is a part of aquaculture, which deals with the culture of plants and animals in water. The farming of fish includes breeding, rearing of the young, and the grow out of juvenile fish to adult or harvestable fish. Fishes are cultured in fresh water, brackish water and seawater for food, recreation, and other purposes. Suitable fishes for culture are those that can easily be bred, grow fast, and have a good market. Species that are hardy and can tolerate crowding are also preferred. There are different types of farming systems being practiced. Extensive Fish Farming System It is the least managed form of fish in farming. The fish depends only on natural food. It should have large ponds. The stocking density is limited to only less than 5,000 fishes per hectare. No supplemental feeding or fertilization of water provided. Yield and survival is low. Semi-Intensive Fish Farming System it involves rather small ponds with higher stocking density and the care is taken to develop natural foods by fertilization with or without supplemental feeding. However, the major food source is natural food. The yield is moderate. Intensive fish farming system Highly managed form of fish farming. It involves small ponds, tanks, raceways, with very high stocking density. Fish are fed woolly with formulated feed. The control of water quality by use of aerators. Control of feeding by use of commercial feed. The yield is high, 15 to 100 tons per hectare or more. Integrated Aquaculture System Fish culture is integrated with agricultural crops such as rice, banana, and coconut thereby producing fish and agricultural crops. Includes rice fish integration, horticulture fish system, mushroom fish system, sari fish system. Kinds of fish being cultured as means of livelihood. Milkfish and now tilapia are the major fishes now produced but groupers, sea bass, rabbit fish, red snappers, carps, and catfishes are grown by some farmers. Milkfish Milkfish is the national fish of the Philippines and it is known locally as bangus. Milkfish is delectable fish which grows fast and can tolerate a wide range of salinity. The culture of milkfish in brackish water ponds and pens is an age-old and traditional practice in many tropical countries such as Philippines. It is farmed in freshwater ponds, lakes, reservoir, and marine cages. Many important characters make billfish a desirable species to culture. Herbivorous feeding habit, which reduces production costs and gives more profit to the farmer. Rapid growth rate compared to other herbivorous fishes. Readily acceptance of a formulated pellet feed under culture conditions. Easy culture practice with other cultivable species like shrimps, millet, tilapia, and carps. Due to its non-cannibalistic nature, stocking density can be high in culture conditions compared to other fin fishes. Tolerance of wide range of salinity makes them suitable to culture in different salinity. Shiny, attractive appearance makes it potential live bait in the tuna industry. Tilapia Tilapia is a good fish for culture. It can be bred in ponds, cages, or fish pens. It feeds voraciously on most natural food like planktons, 
bottom biota, president ponds, but prefer vegetative foods. Tilapia is a common name for nearly 100 species of tilapia used in culturing fish. Many people culture tilapia because it is easy to raise and it is a fast-growing fish and can survive in any bodies of water either in seawater or in fresh water and in any type of environment. Catfish Clarias batracus is a black slippery fish with mustache to aid it in swimming. It is called catfish in English, hito in Ilocos, ito in Pampanga, and pantat in Pangasinan, Cebu, and Iloilo. Catfish are resistant to diseases, can be stocked at high densities, and tolerates low water quality. Catfish are usually found in marshes, rice fields, swamps, streams, rivers, lake irrigation canals, or in any body or fresh water. Catfish are carnivores, but can feed on small bottom-dwelling animals, rice bran, kitchen refuse, or formulated feeds. Grouper Groupers, popularly known as lapulap in some Philippine dialects, are important marine fishes. They are characterized by thick-set or stout bodies slightly elongate with brown spots or blotches. They also have very large mouths and normally protruding lower jaw. It is, however, difficult to differentiate one species from another due to the fish's ability to change its colors. Groupers are cultured in the Philippines using tiny fry and juveniles caught from the wild. Fish farmers grow them in net cages and in ponds. Grouper culture can result in high productivity and profitability. Grouper farming could therefore become another dollar earner for the country as live marketable size grouper have strong export potentials. The demand for grouper in the international market is fast growing, particularly in Hong Kong, Japan, and Singapore. Here are the possible hazards caused by fish culture to the people and the community. Pollution Inside and outside pond system, due to excessive feed wastes settled inside the pond or discharged untreated to ocean waters. Chemical toxicity Because of the use of pesticides and antibiotics. Displacements of native species Because importation of foreign species. Decline in local food crops because of conversion of agricultural land to ponds. Competition for credit, land, and other resources. Gradual sinking of the cultural land area. Spread of parasites and diseases. Loss of mangrove system. Water and soil salinization. Public health risks. These are the ways to prevent possible hazards brought about by culturing fish. Use of proper site evaluation and design procedures. Good construction practices. Attention to erosion control. Lower stocking rate and commercial feeding rate. Proper management techniques. Maintaining good water quality conditions. Keeping the culture facility clean and well organized. Adoption or sustainable culture techniques. Here is the market demands for a fish product and byproducts. Fish is consumed as fresh, fermented, dried, smoked, or canned. Around 70% of the total catch is consumed fresh or chilled, while 30% is processed into cured, canned, or frozen products or disposed of life. The bulk of cured fish and fishery products are consumed locally while only a small quantity is exported as ethnic products. Most of the aquaculture products are either auctioned on site or transported fish ports for auctioning. On-site bidding is done by middle persons and fish exporters. Bidding in fish ports is typically done by middle persons, fish vendors in the local wet markets, and small fish processors. Some aquaculture farms have their own processing facilities. Hence, most of their aquaculture products directly go to their processing plants. Traditional processed fish products are sold in wet markets throughout the country. 
Some products are sold in supermarkets, including canned or bottled fish, deboned milk fish, and specialty products like pasteurized fish paste, crab fat. Direct consumers and retailers. Here are the types of buyers according to the characteristics and functions. Retailers. Middlemen who sell their fish purchases to the ultimate consumers mostly in retail markets. Buy sellers. Wholesalers but are differentiated from them as operating within the confines of the fish landing area. Institutional buyers. Buying fish for consumption in such institutions as hospitals, restaurants, etc. Processors. Buy in bulk for processing into salted dried fish, tinapa, fish meal, etc. Exporters. Buy fish for export to foreign market. Canners. Buy fish for canning. Final consumers. Buy fish for household consumption. National government agencies like the Department of Agriculture has efforts to roll out more Kadiwa mobile markets throughout the country wherein the consumers are given an opportunity to directly buy fresh fruits and vegetables, fish and other fishery products, fresh and frozen meat and poultry products, as well as some dry goods right at the premises of their barangays. Here are the benefits that can be derived from fish culturing. Alternative food source Fish and other seafood are good sources of protein and have more nutritional value like the addition of natural oils into the diet. Increased jobs in the market Aquaculture provides more hiring possibilities and more jobs. Reduce fishing of the wild from the sea Allowed for alternative sources of food instead of fishing the same species in their natural habitats. Population numbers of some wild stocks of some species are in danger of being depleted due to overfishing. Sustainable use of sea resources. Aquaculture provides opportunities to replenish stocks in the wild. Entrepreneurship. Provides extra income to supplement the earnings of the family.